which is very, like, is exceptional. People control their own destiny, and that's ultimately what people want. So well, a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the companies in the world ever accomplish that. Welcome to another episode of The Dan Lok Show. Today, I have the co-founder and co-CEO of Medwire. Medwire is a technology company with the mission of helping small businesses grow and their local communities glow. JB founded Medwire at 28 years old and has helped led the company to now over 100 million plus in revenue and over 500 employees in under 10 years. I mean, that is an incredible, incredible accomplishment. So JB, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. I'm happy to be here. And now, JB, both of us, we are both marketers, right? We love marketing, social media. But take us back how, how this all got started. Maybe take us back into the beginning when you came up with the idea, you saw the opportunity. What was that like? Yeah, you know, it started really in high school. I started learning design and marketing and sales, self-teaching myself a lot of that stuff. And then I went to college and played college football. Um, which is, you know, very time consuming. It's basically a full time job. Mm. And so when I finished my senior season, mm. I had a lot of time on my hands. So there was a local magazine company nearby that did travel magazines. It's called Zia Publishing. Mm. Um, and I just walked in and said, hey, um, I'm willing to work for free to learn to be an internship, do whatever. Um, and they said, well, we don't have anything in design or sales or anything, but we need a website. Do you know how to build a website? Um, and I said, no, but give me a desk and I'll figure it out in a couple of months. And so they did. And so that's really what I realized walking around at that time. This is around 2005. Wow. I realized that there was still so many businesses that didn't have a digital presence. And it was a skill set that not a lot of people had at that time. Mm. Um, so I knew that it would be an opportunity. I talked to my dad about it. Um, and then I worked with him for about five years at a trading company, did a lot mm. of digital marketing. It's a very competitive space in the trading industry, obviously. So yes. we were doing digital marketing way before small business. And, and over time, we just realized, you know, this idea really could do something. So in 2009, um, cold turkey, we gave away all of our accounts. And my dad and I actually founded Madwire, the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, and built it from there. So today, you know, we have about 600 employees. So it's been just like a snowball since that point. Mm. And in the beginning, the first couple of years, what did you do to just to get traction? We did digital marketing. So that was the beauty of it is what we were selling was exactly what we were doing for ourselves. We were the best case study. Mm. So, you know, at that time, Google ads was like, you know, the main channel. So yes. we were doing Google ads. We were getting leads. You know, we came from the trading industry, so we embraced sales. So mm. at that time, a lot of the competitors were kind of freelancers. They would try to sell through email. We would get on the phone and we were selling basically every lead. So we were like, like, this is going to blow up. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and then from there, uh, in the first couple of years, when did you, what, what was the, what was the growth curve like? Like how long it took you to go from zero to the, let's say the first 1 million revenue and then from one to 10 and then 10 to hundred. What was that like? Yeah, you know, now at this point, looking back, it's hard to remember exactly, but, you know, we've been an Inc. 5,000 fastest growing company eight years in a row. Which yes, which is very, like, is exceptional. A tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the companies in the world ever accomplished that. Yeah, yeah, it's very, very rare. So, you know, I think we hit a million within about, at least on a run rate basis, within a year. Yes. Um, and wow. then we were, we were growing at, like, you know, 5,000 in the thousand yeah. percents every year, those first four or five years. Yes, yes. And from a, because the, I guess the five years with your dad, that honed your skills in terms of building your, like all the sales skills and digital marketing skills that you have. Um, I noticed a lot of marketers, they're very good marketers, but they're not very good business people, if you know what I mean, right? When it comes to building a company, what were some of the challenges that you faced when you were, growing marketing 360 to transition from not just being a good marketer, good in sales, but also being a CEO running the company. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with the people and just, you know, managing the people and the culture, um, the hiring. You learn so many lessons along the way. You know, mm -hmm. what I learned is follow your gut. You know, a lot of times in the interview process, 
there's just something about somebody you're just not 100% on it, but they seem really good. There's no reason not to hire them, but mm. they're always right in that case. And in other cases, somebody maybe doesn't check all the boxes, but you just mm. feel good about them. Mm. And those are generally always good, good picks. And so mm. follow your gut and don't, don't, you know, give people an opportunity to, to turn their performance around, but not forever. Um, so we kind of developed, you know, a methodology of you perform. It's based on attitude, effort, and performance. So if the attitude's good and the effort's good, the performance can be long suffering. Mm. If the attitude is not good or effort is not good, it doesn't even matter if the performance is good. That needs to change immediately. But if performance is still not good, that's an immediate move down, move to another direction. So that's mm. kind of what we figured out. And when you were growing the companies in terms of leadership, uh, how did you grow your team from that? Like one, maybe the first dozen employees and then the first 30 employees, 100 employees. Do you see any, any when, you, when you hit the kind of like a ceiling of like, oh, now it's getting com yeah. complex, right? Yeah, I mean, you're exactly what worked with 10 didn't work with 30 and what yes. worked with 30 didn't work with 100. So you're <laughs> constantly innovating. Yes. Um, you know, the way that we did it, which, you know, may be unique to us, but I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs go through this. But mm. for me, I did every job initially. And I would do it as long as I could until I, I really was getting stretched thin, but I wouldn't let go of it until I identified somebody that was as good or better. And once I identified mm -hmm. that, I would put them in charge of that. I would let them own that. And then I would mm -hmm. continue focusing on these things and carving new ground. And that's wow. the way we've done it is I'm always kind of the pioneer on anything new, any new product process. I do it, master it find somebody even better than me, put them in place, and then I try to do the next thing. And so we've just continued layering in leaders that way. So it took a while to, for you to kind of delegate and empower each division, right? Kind of each department. It did, yep, yep, it took a while. Probably took, I mean, literally about two years ago was when I finally let go of like the last department. Wow, that took me how many years? <laughs> it took me many, 10. many years. Yeah, like 10 years. 10 years. Wow. It took 10 years. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Wow. So now I manage, I lead the leaders now at this point. Mm -hmm. How many people you have on your executive team now, like in terms of leadership team? So we have strategic leaders is what we call the top level, level leaders. There's about, yes. there's about 15. Um, and okay. then we have directors below them. And there's okay. about 60 directors. And then yes. below them, we have what we call leads and managers. And then there's about another, there's about a hundred of them. Got it, got it. And how many of your team members are like local and how many uh, are like they're remote, just roughly? They were mostly all local until COVID. And then since then, we've been working in a hybrid environment um, mm. and hired, hired a lot more people outside of our area. So at this point, out of the leadership group, we probably have about seven, I would say, um, okay. that, are, that are not in this area. Yeah. Do you, do you pivot your leadership or your management approach now you have more people working kind of remotely? Like what, what are some of the things that you, you do differently? Well, I mean, we've, thankfully, we moved to Zoom right before COVID happened. So it was perfect timing. Okay. So we were already okay. on Zoom. So we were already yeah. starting to do meetings that way. And so, yes. you know, we just embraced that. So now we do all our leadership meetings. We do all the meetings on Zoom. Mm. Um, we've always done an all hands meeting every Friday. And it was about mm. a 15 minute all hands meeting in person. So when COVID happened, we started doing that on Zoom. And Actually, it became more efficient because you're able to cover more ground. People have the visuals right in front of them, so you can go through slides yes, and everything. Mm -hmm. Totally, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's recorded, so you can send it if people, you don't have to drop their kids off and missed it. They can watch it. Mm -hmm. So it's actually worked pretty good. We even did our last company party on Zoom, which I, I was kind of skeptical about, but it ended up being amazing. It was awesome. <laughs> Every team did a video. It was kind of like a mini Saturday Night Live, so everybody loved it. Interesting, because now we also do within my company, like sometimes lunch, we just have like Zoom lunch. Yeah, it's exactly. almost like it's, it's kind of weird, but it's kind of it kind of works. A happy hour. Yeah, yeah, it is like that's the way we have the conversation, just com casual conversations, right? With each other, each other and team members and right. JB with the, the company in, in the beginning, maybe for those who don't know, walk us through the Marketing 360, maybe your business model, right? You have got the SaaS, what it looks like, maybe what is the ascension, what is the back end, all the products and services within the whole like ecosystem. Yeah, so Marketing 360 is a small business marketing platform. And, and over the years, we've added business management tools into it. So mm -hmm. now it's really, it has everything you need to manage and grow the business from managing your leads and customers, very customizable CRM. 
mm-hmm. um, to payment. So you can do invoicing, subscriptions, e-commerce, whatever you want. It has mm-hmm. the website platform in it. So you can build websites, landing pages, e-commerce stores. Um, you can schedule social posts, manage reviews, um, mm-hmm. do email marketing, automation, text me- message marketing. Mm-hmm. It has basically everything in it you would pretty much need at this point for small business. That's been a journey. Yeah, Yeah. (laughs) exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We've just added more and more over the years. And then one thing that's unique about us is you don't just have the platform. We actually have the human element of the talent talent that you can add into it. So similar to a fiber, you can add in a dedicated designer or social media manager or content writer into your plan. And these are not outsourced people. These are actually people we have on staff that are highly trained individuals that understand your brand. And so that, that kind of makes us unique. That's interesting. Talk, talk to us a little bit more about that. So it's almost the SaaS, but combined with a, I guess, a concierge service in some way. Yeah, it's like a SaaS with a, with a marketplace that we, we own. So okay. we own the talent in the marketplace, essentially. Okay. okay. So in the, and the talents one, are, where, where did they come from? Um, they're people that we've hired over the years. So now they're now they're kind of all over. Most of them were in our area initially, but it's designers, video pros, content writers, ad managers, social managers. Mm. You, you can add all of them into your plan and basically build yourself a virtual team, which, yes. you know, small businesses are even embracing that more now since COVID, obviously. So mm. it's much more, it's easier to manage a team through Marketing 360 that understands your brand than trying to juggle freelancers. Mm. And it's a lot more cost effective than hiring an in-house team, which is really expensive. So it's a good, it's a good, you know, need that small business has that we offer there. Mm. And JB, in the beginning, did you raise any kind of capital for MetWire or were just you and dad kind of bootstrap all the way to where you are now? We bootstrapped from um, 09 to 2014. Okay. And then we brought in some partners pretty small at that point. Our equity partners own about 15%. Okay, just so. just a little bit, little bit, a little bit of capital injection, kind of yeah. to get because the your, 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 the hockey stick growth that you have, right? Right, right. Mm-hmm. And were you, but you were you looking for for capital back then to to do more marketing, like, uh, or was it just a strategic partner? Basically, we had built a essentially a mathematical formula. Of our marketing had gotten so dialed in. We knew if we spent this much, it would generate this many leads. Our, clo- our closing ratio was this. This is how many salespeople we can feed so many leads before their close rate goes down. Yes. Once we had the math equation, we just needed to put more into it to grow even faster. So that was kind of the thinking. Got it. Got it. So, you know, more capital that would just accelerate the growth, right? Right. Uh, share with us something on, I mean, I love sales. I love closing, of course. Uh, talk to us about uh, how you run your sales team and how that integrates with your, your marketing. What's, what's, what have you learned that's been the most valuable? Yeah, sales is tough. I mean, sales is salespeople do really well and then they don't do well. And so we've always just worked on consistency. <laughs> exactly. I can relate. I can relate. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like golf. You have a great day and then you're totally off the next day and you have no idea why. Um, yeah. And yeah. so salespeople, you know, we have a lot of meetings, sales meetings, keep them motivated. Um, we have sales decks, which are basically their guides that mm-hmm. they use their own brand voice. They can go their own direction, but that's helped you know, increase consistency for sure. Do you um, do on only inbound point. or outbound or both? Inbound, all inbound. inbound. We don't do any outbound. Okay. No. Okay. So when someone comes in into, into the system and then the, the, the salespeople call them and yep. you know, have the exactly. conversations. Got it. Yep. Follow Got the it. process. Yep. Got it. Makes sense. And well, I mean, with now all the marketing that you do with what's happening on social, what has been the most effective in terms of customer acquisitions for, for your company? For us, it's really the 360 approach, which is to do search for your very best um, keywords. So that's okay. inbound search. search. Yeah. Um, you, you need to layer that in with audience marketing. So we've really, we don't really do keywords anymore, actually. You know, mm. we've moved away from that. Now we do audiences. So you build audiences for us. It's audiences that are business owners. Yes. We target those audiences and run ads no matter what they're searching, try to become mm. you know, visible there. We do tons of social media ads. Um, I do. I personally do a lot of YouTube ads, similar to you, Dan. Um, yes. Yours are better, but I do a lot yeah, of those. Good, good, good. <laughs> and you've got a great YouTube channel. I mean, it's it's an awesome yeah. digital marketing channel. Yeah, it builds a lot of trust. Um, and then we've actually recently seen um, a lot of results from digital billboards, physical digital billboards on the highway, because there's a certain element of trust that's built from that. When somebody sees a Facebook ad, that doesn't bring as much trust because it's so easy to do now yeah, than a yes. billboard. When you see a billboard, you're like, that brand must be legit. So if somebody saw yes. us on Facebook, 
so maybe are, they're in our retargeting campaign and then they see the billboard, they think, I need to call these guys. They're everywhere. They must be good. Uh, you know? Yes, yes. That, that's very creative. That's very creative. Now, mm -hmm. although consumers don't think about, hey, someone also pays money to, to have the billboard, but like you said, well, if they've got a billboard, it must, must be legit, right? Exactly. And, yep. and, and with, with the, so a little bit organic, pay, search, all, all, the, all the things that you actually do with the yeah. Marketing 360, you, you teach what you do, right? Which which is which is awesome. Okay. Uh, with, with the with the the marketing, with what's happening now, also you know with the retargeting, with the with Apple right iOS. What what are you recommending to your your clients, right? Your your users, right? How do they adapt to some of these changes in terms of Facebook policy or iPhone or all yeah. these things that's happening? Well, I mean, it it's kind of goes back to your brand is more important now than ever. And I think people kind of moved away from that with the inbound and the targeting and everything that you could do. But now you need to build the brand. If you're a local business, you need to be the Nike of your hometown. When somebody needs the products okay. or services you sell, okay. they need to think of you first. You need to rent space in their mind and that's branding. So what type of content are you creating that's actually valuable? You shouldn't be just jamming sales pitches down people's faces. How are you building a brand in your local community? So people, when they think of the HVAC company, they just can't help but think about yeah. you because you are just yes. literally everywhere adding value. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really what we focus on is your brand so important, your logo. I mean, all the details are really, really important. And you just want to have that level of quality. And here again, that brings trust. We always say marketing is trust and traffic. You need the traffic yeah. and you need the trust. And so you're constantly doing, and that's why billboards are good because it actually builds trust. And so the more things you can do to build trust, the better. Mm. And are most of your users, JB, are they uh, from US or are they international? Like what, what's that breakdown like? Uh, they're mostly US, about 85%. And then we have about 15% outside the US, mostly English speaking. So Canada, Australia. Canada. Um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And do you find that certain verticals you have, because business owners are very broad, like are there any mm -hmm. type of business owners that, okay, 20% of our client base actually come from like this type of businesses? Uh, about 30% of our customers are e-com, so they're 100% they're online, okay. um, selling anything you could think of online. And then mm. the remainder would be local businesses you'd see around town, plumbers, chiropractors, roofers, fitness professionals, restaurants. Those are the rest of our customer base, pretty evenly mm. distributed. Mm. Yeah. Which is great because more, more, more than ever now they need the tools and technology to help them with what's happening in the world, right? To, to yeah. market the businesses. Uh, do you see a, a spike uh, since like COVID? In certain verticals? Yes, in the verticals. E-commerce, for sure. Um, E-commerce has seen a spike. Um, also, local businesses just wanting more of a, a stronger digital presence, the ability to take payments and stuff. You'd be surprised. I mean, business owners even just a year ago only <laughs> accepted check, which was crazy. <laughs> but now, now they're embracing like, we need to be able to take online payments. We need to be able to do those types of things. So that part of it's been good. You know, certain verticals like restaurants, they took a huge hit. We had, we had a lot of them. We had a lot of gyms. Gyms got gyms, hammered. Yeah, 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 fitness. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, but luckily the essential businesses kept cranking. So that was good. Mm -hmm. And do you find uh, what's a typical uh, like a lifetime value of a customer? I assume once they, they come into the system, they probably stick with you guys for a long, long time. Yeah, um, it's we have a six month window where it's essentially a paid trial. We have a six month agreement where mm -hmm. we try to understand if this is going to work for you. And if they make it past that, they stay a really long time. So the lifetime value is about for us right now is about forty one thousand for us. Mm -hmm. Mm. Um, which is really good. In the first six months, we, our payback is in three to four months from mm. our acquisition costs, which is pretty good. So yes. if, if they stay at least six months, it's like a free trade basically coming from yeah. the trading industry. And after that, you just see the gains. Yes, yes. And then the, probably that's why the onboarding, the activation, that don't, I'm assuming it's very critical for you guys. Yeah, it's a pretty intense process, the onboarding, the activation. And then you know, with marketing, it's still a partnership. We can do the best marketing in the world and drive you mm. great leads, but you still got to dunk it in and close the deal. So if you're not clo calling the leads and have a good sales <laughs> process, then yes. it's still not going to work. And so that's why it's kind of a discovery period. It is. It is. And, and the business owners, they might also need some some sales training on, on how to best convert those leads as well, right? Uh, all, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and so with now uh, the company at, at the current size, where, where do you see, what's the vision for Marketing 360, let's say, in the next like five years? 
Yeah, so, you know, right now we're just continuing to try to achieve our mission, help small businesses grow, help their local mm. communities glow. Mm. And we feel if we can do a great job of that and continue building our brand, then the rest kind of takes care of itself. Yes, you know, yes. We feel that a SPAC is a possible opportunity for us with yes. some ac acquisitions because we have some things we could bolt into the platform still. So yes. a SPAC of combining companies might make sense. A traditional IPO in the next 18 months might be a possibility as well. Mm. Um, we also have some strategic partners that might, you know, play out to be, you know, something transformational. So I think in the next year to three years, there's going to be probably some pretty good moves that we make um, to hopefully increase our impact is the goal. Mm -hmm. hey, JB, I know you are very, very big on in terms of culture. I want to talk a little bit about culture. Uh, from your experience, uh, how important is culture and what are some of the things that you've done internally within your organization to to create the ideal culture to grow to scale yeah well you know we have a very team environment the we before the me um you know we've got our mad wire values we talk about them all the time everybody understands what, what, what the are mission. the mad values so it's it's, it's mad wire so m is mission minded a is attitude and effort d is a delightful like mm -hmm. with our customers and diverse and that's that's both diversity of people within our culture, but also like our diversity of our offering. Mm, nice, nice. Essentially, is the goal there. Um, w is winner's mindset. Um, mm. I is innovative. Mm. R is resilient, which was one we hammered on with COVID. Yes. <laughs> Got to be resilient. Yeah. Um, and then E is execution excellence, and execution excellence was our was our number one value when we started. It's etched into steel. It's hung on all of our walls here. Which execution excellence is do what's right. Always do what's right, even if it's the harder way. If your neighbor's phone is ringing, answer it. Don't let it go to voicemail. If there's trash on the floor, pick it up. You know, that's execution excellence. And so we don't generally have job descriptions. We've added them over the years because HR makes you eventually. But yes. initially it was just the job description was the same for everybody. Execution excellence in whatever you're asked to do. That's it. You know, oh, I so love that. I love that's that. the, that, that, those are our values. So we talk about them all the time. And um, outside of that, you know, we say championship leaders build championship teams that drive championship performance. And every small business wants to perform well. But the key to performance is having a championship leader first. And their number one priority is building a championship team, which is a combination of culture and execution. And the culture is the energy that's needed to execute the plan. Mm. Um, and execution is just execution excellence, right? And if you if you have a good leader and a championship team, the performance takes care of itself. That's the easy mm. part. Mm. But a lot of times we just focus on the performance and don't mm. actually focus on the team. The people is the most important piece. Kind of the cause and an effect. Exactly. How, what what do you do to attract and retain leaders? You know, we we try to showcase our culture with videos on our website, um, with our okay. social media content. So if you go to madwire.com, mm. there's a bunch of videos in there. And, and those are generally videos we've done at our company parties every year. So we have a really cool company party. It's called the Orange Party. So everybody wears all orange. And we have a, a cool company video that we'll release. And then we put yes. that on our site. So over mm. the years, people mm. see that site. They're like, man, that culture looks awesome. I would love to mm. be a part of it. And then they'll apply. So mm. it's been a good marketing tool for us. Mm, so it's kind of showcasing, hey, we we a bunch of cool people doing some cool things, right? If you feel like this resonates with you, you want to be part of it, hey, you know, come apply, right? Exactly. Yeah. Got it. Exactly. Got it. And and for retain for retention, do you how do you I guess compensate and also lead the the leaders? Do they do they get uh, stock options or equity? Like how do you structure that? Yep, we do have stock options for leaders. That's an element of it. Um, we also have a lot of just commission models. We believe in commission models. Giving for marketing, people, se like sales, of, of course, but like for marketing? Yep, for marketing too. Yep, yep. How, how does that work? Can you share with us a little bit? Based on your retention, um, based on your the amount of MRR that you manage oh, got it, got it, on a monthly got basis, it. things like got that. It. Um, we, if there's a way to do a commission in a position, we'll do it. <laughs> That's what we prefer because mm -hmm. then it's motivating people. It's rewarding them and motivating them to do the right thing, right? And ultimately mm -hmm. drive value there. Mm -hmm. But also from a business perspective, you know, during good times, all boats rise. During bad times, all boats come down. And so mm -hmm. like when COVID happened and we lost a lot of accounts temporarily, mm -hmm. You know, pay came down with it because it's mostly mm. commissions where if, if you had fixed salaries up here, you'd have been squeezed and then you would have been forced to furlough people, let people go because you just had to. 
with commissions, it sort of automatically takes care of itself. Mm -hmm. So some kind of a base with the, the with the commission yeah. structure, but the commission it's like commission, not like a KPI with a bonus. It's it's actually commission. It's actually commission, and the commission is generally about usually seventy percent, sixty to seventy percent of your income potential. So it's substantial. Wow, yeah. wow. So for I guess let's say for the someone who's managing the accounts, the, they would you would measure them in terms of retaining those accounts, right? Or some it could be could be ascension. I'm just guessing. Ex exactly. And Dan, you'll like this because you like content creation, but yes. our content creators, um, everything they do is credit based. So okay. if they, let's say they write like a thousand word blog, okay. that might be like 800 credits in this example. So when they complete that work, they pull the credits out of the customer's account and they're paid commission on that. So even our content creators are getting paid commission for production which is cross-checked with quality, obviously. You have to make sure the quality is good. But assuming the quality is good, they're paid on the production of the work. And the thing is, is before we added that element in, production was a lot lower. We added that in, production went way up. Same amount of people. It's just it's just because people are rewarded for what they're doing, so they're inspired to do more. I of love it. that, I love that. Okay, okay, so so teach me some. So how does a credit work? So, so walk, walk me through that one more time. Yeah, so a credit, it's $1 credit. So okay. when a customer wants content marketing with us, let's say. Yes, they, can they go to the marketplace. Have, they go to the marketplace, they can yep. say, let's do 600 credits a month in our plan. Okay. Okay. So then they can use those 600 credits for to do a short video, to do a blog post, to do an okay. email, to okay. do an email campaign. Okay. And so there's a price associated with those yeah. tasks. Yeah. So when they assign it, our content person will complete it. And when they okay. complete it, that, that credit value is under their production and which they're paid commissions on. That's how it Interesting. works. Interesting. Interesting. So that motivates them to I guess, not just do good work, but do it faster. Do it faster, do more of it. Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. And, and then do you see that, what about internal, not just the marketplace? Like how do you, yeah. how do you what do you do with that, like commission-based? Those are internal people, our content writers, they're actual employees. So they have a base salary of $30,000 is their base salary. And then they make commissions on top of that with production. Mm -hmm. So our other roles here mm -hmm. are similar to that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Like I said, if we can find a way to give them commissions, we will. So like our payment consultants, whenever somebody adopts payments, once they've processed $500 of payments in the platform, they earn a commission. So they're getting a small commission just to get somebody to connect their bank account because mm. that's that's good. That's step one. But yeah. once they once they process five hundred dollars, that's a win. That means they're actually using the product. Then they get the second commission. So, just the more you can do that, it motivates people to drive results as opposed to just you know coast in a salary system. I love that. I love that, and that's very very entrepreneurial. Do you think that also contributes to be part of why? Uh, you're recognized by Glassdoor as like you know one of the best place to, you know, to to work for in the country. I guess some of these structures. I th I think that's a piece of it because people control their own destiny, and that's ultimately what people want. So mm. we want to try to give them a pathway to control their own destiny. You know, you want to make three hundred thousand. You have a way, yeah. you're going to have to be incredibly efficient, but it's possible. You know, so you don't you don't roadblock them. Mm, I love that. I've, I actually have not heard of that a lot. So JB, this is this is incredible. And let's go back to to, to culture and leadership. So the core values. So some company, some companies they might have core values, but how do you make sure that they 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 embody it, right? How do you make sure that they they remember it? It's what they what they live by. Um, well, I think that starts with the with the leader. So that's me personally. I'm always working on culture, virtues, studying mindset truly having character because you it has to literally be in your core if it's not we're like since mm. we were cavemen we can sniff out something that's not authentic so mm. it has to really be in the leader and if that's mm. the case it will basically through osmosis work its way into the with the other leaders and then down into the team and so it really starts with the leadership team and i think it, the number one thing it starts with is character you have to have character um, and that goes back to just those core values. You don't lie. You say what you do. You do what you say, right? Mm -hmm. You meet and exceed expectations, never fall short. Mm -hmm. And it, that has to be from the leadership team. And if it is, then it, it plays into the team. And actually what you'll find is when somebody doesn't fit those things, the team does not want them on the team. They don't fit the tribe, basically. Mm -hmm. So they'll come to you and say, hey, this person, this person has to go. Like they're, mm. they're not meeting our values. Um, and mm. So that's the key. Do you find that when you were, let's say from the zero to one million, 
or the 1 million to 10, 10 to 100, uh, the, the management team, the executive team, I'm guessing, but it's a, it's a different team at, at the level, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is different team, new leaders. Um, some people move on to new opportunities, which is great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, you know, but the, and the team grows too, and that changes the dynamic a little bit. So mm -hmm. ultimately, two heads are stronger than one. So mm -hmm. over time, we've just gotten stronger with more perspectives. So that part of it's been good. Your dad and you, uh, you got what, what would be his role? Is he actively involved? Is he more like a silent partner? Because it's awesome to see like it's just a, a father and son like relationship. I think that's yeah. very rare and very special. Yeah, no, he's still very actively involved. He nice. he really over, he was our CFO for the first I don't know, eight to ten years, and then we brought a, a CFO in. Um, yes. But he he still watches. You can't he can't help himself. He watches that stuff every day. It's like um, JB, yeah. are you are you doing good? Like what's going on, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, which is good. It's an accountability partner. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he, and he's also passionate about sales as well. So we actually both start every day about five a.m. if not earlier. Um, oh. Every single day, it's the two of us here in the dark working. Um, and we stay till about four, four thirty our time, um, and then had our normal hours are seven to four. So the rest of our team gets here about seven if they're coming in the office. At this point, they're on Zoom. But mm -hmm. yeah, he yeah he works hard every day. Wow, wow! And how many people you have now in in the uh, local office? How big is it? It's, it's huge place must be. Yeah, it's uh, we have two buildings, both over a hundred thousand square feet. Um, mm. So, and at this point, we only really need one. There's only about twenty percent of people that come into the office on a daily basis right now. Yes. The rest of them are working remote. We just gave them the option; they can come in if they want, kind of like we work, or they could work remote if they want. So, we just left it up to them. Mm -hmm. And are you thinking of switching back after, let's say, COVID is over? Like, what 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 is your plan? Or are you okay with the people working remote? We're okay with it as long as performance is as good or better. We're totally fine with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, we don't have plans on making people come back. We do think more will start to come back as mm -hmm. they feel comfortable. Um, but, yeah, we, we plan on just continuing to operate this way. Mm -hmm. Can you walk us through, let's say, someone who's a business owner, I mean, a local business owner, uh, and they, they join the Marketing 360 a uh, little bit, maybe new to this whole internet marketing, digital marketing, social media, uh, how do you help them besides giving them the platform, like going from like zero to having enough leads, enough customers and marketing online? Like what, what are the, uh, take me through that kind of the client journey if you could. Well, we, we try to understand their brand and then a lot of these small businesses don't really have much of a brand. So we'll do a brand guidelines and, and nice. get their buy-in on that. And then nice. we'll start to create content based on core ideas so depending on the business we'll find the we call them attention grabbers but it's those main topics yes, and yes. those topics are basically questions that people are thinking about before they buy your product or service and we mm. want to understand what those are so we can create content for that okay. so like if you go to google right now and just type in like how to you know roof how to do a metal roof they have the people also ask, ask yes. section now on Google. Yes. And if yes. you click that and, and keep clicking and opening questions, it keeps adding more questions. Yes. So those are all topics that people commonly search for. That's why they're showing up on that on mm. Google. Those That's are all great, topics. Great mm -hmm. Write a huge list out. And now you have all the content. And now you what you do is you write articles, you create emails, you create videos. videos yeah get those out there with that brand guideline. So we basically help the customer understand the modern world of content marketing and how to get their brand out there and build trust with credi mm. you know, credible content. Like I said earlier, to try to help them become the Nike of their hometown. That's the I goal. Lo I, lo I love that. I love that line. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the goal. So we help them through that journey because they don't know, you know, they're busy, busy running their business. Mm. Um, a lot of them have no experience in marketing. Um, some of them know enough to be dangerous, but they need they need a lot of help. So we try to yes. step in and take that role for them. Do you have any in, in terms of within Marketing 360, any kind of uh, uh, trainings and programs that you provide to business owners? Because they need education as well, right? Or yeah. is that is that part of the ecosystem or is something additional that they could they could invest in? Yes, we do. Um, we have uh, support.marketing360.com has a lot of articles. Our YouTube channel is a great resource yes, to learn. Yes, YouTube channel, yeah. Um, but we also pair every new account with a dedicated marketing success manager, hmm, which essentially okay. is their marketing coach, pretty yeah. much. 
Yeah. And they, they stay assigned to them forever. So each, Okay, each, let, let me guess. They're also commission-based. Commissions. <laughs> they're commission. <laughs> commission. Exactly. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. The, the more successful the customer is, the more commission they make. Meaning that they do how many revenue that they generate, right? Is that yeah, right? Yeah, revenue generated and retention, all those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and how many accounts one manager could handle? The, the average is around 30. Okay. 30, 30 to 50. Yeah, mm -hmm. right in that window. And they're the ones that kind of helps them, gets on the phone, hey, what do you need help with? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Interesting, very interesting. And so, so from there, so branding guide, uh, the content, and then afterwards? And then, and then it's, you know, we try to figure out what that six month marketing calendar looks like. So is mm -hmm. based on your seasonality, what products and services are more popular? How do we create email campaigns to get in front of your existing customers to drive lifetime value of your customers? And how do we acquire new ones during those time periods? So the marketing success manager is always proactively presenting those ideas. Hey, have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Then in the background scenes, we have basically the secret sauce, which is we call it smart campaigns and smart start, which is over 12 years of working with all these industries. We already know what works. So we have that in the background scene. So when a plumber comes in, for example, we know what the campaigns are going to are going to be most successful for them. So we're just mm. presenting them these ideas. Hey, you should be doing that. You should be doing this. So that's upsell opportunities for us. Hey, do you just want us to do it? Do you want us to create the email? It's this many credits. Do you want us to create a video for this? That's this is that many credits. So they're you know they're generating sales, and so then they're making commissions on that. So that's kind of the what where the the done for you the marketplace comes in, combined yeah. with the intelligence and data that you've accumulated over the years. That's right. Yeah, because you. You can have the best platform in the whole world with the greatest tools, but unless you're using them correctly, it's not going to yeah. do anything. I mean, I have some amazing tools in my garage, but I never do any home improvements. So <laughs> it's really not helping me. You know what I'm saying? Like yes, we yes. need, we can't just give them the platform. We have to mm. give them the pathway and then mm. give them the craftsmen to go ahead and do the stuff for them if they want us to. And I, I love the model because I think sometimes a lot of even software founders, they forgot SaaS is software as a service. So mm -hmm. from in your case, Marketing 360, correct me if I'm wrong, but I could see you, you very much focus on a service first, right? What do you need? Like, what help do you need? Where are you stuck? Okay, let us help you. If it's technology, we got it. If it's people, we got it. If it's, you need to outsource that, we got it. Whatever it is that you need. If it's intelligence that we've done something in the past in this industry, we got it as well. Is that right? Yeah, it is. The only difference is we don't necessarily sell services first. We say whether you do it, we do it, or you have an internal team do it, you need a platform. Yes. You need a tool. You bring that in with a platform. Yes. You yes. have to have the platform. No question. Now the question is this, this is something that can't be skipped. It must be done. So if you're not going to do it, somebody has to do it. Do you want yes. us to do it? And then that's yes. where we come in and then we help them. I love that. I love that. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Uh, one last question before before we go. And thank you for for all the all the just incredible insights. I'm I'm learning a lot. I got to watch this a couple of times. I really appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And for I think a lot of marketers, at least from what I see, because they're so good with marketing and they kind of stuck at doing marketing, they can transition out to building a, to me, a significant enterprise. What you've done, right? Mm -hmm. And. What did you do in terms of reinventing yourself from being a very good marketing person, maybe an identity shift to, hey, I'm now the CEO of, of a tech company? You know, I think it's, a, it's just something you sort of evolved to, but I think process is probably the most important thing. If, you know, if I had to think about it, you have to really refine the process on what needs to be done, document it. Mm -hmm coach somebody to execute it, hold them accountable to doing it, um, and then add people with revenue. And, and make sure you're hiring based on revenue. We, we always do a head count based on revenue. So when we hit this, this is what the head count should be. We hit this, this is what the head count should be. You never want to get ahead of yourself. Cash is incredibly important. So make sure that you're generating the revenue and then you're laying in people, but don't just throw them out there without a defined process. You want to really give them a defined process. And then that way, when you have a hundred people following the same process, mm -hmm. if you tweak that process a little bit, the all hundred people improve. If yes. all hundred people are doing their own process, Ooh. yes, one by one by one, it becomes unmanageable. So process yes. is very important. Yes. And what was with the, the leadership team, was marketing the last thing you you you, you kind of let go? It must be hard. 
It must be hard, I have to assume. Yeah, I still love branding and marketing, so I'll throw my two cents in there. But, um, yes. you know, I, I was a big advocate for the platform and very involved with our engineering team, um, nice. the user interface, all that. I, 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 do, I love design at the end of the day. And when we started Madwire, M was marketing and design. Was oh, the meaning behind it. Okay, okay, that's cool. That's cool. But eventually we changed that to make a difference. Because we started doing just so much more than just marketing and design. It just came down to every small business you work with, just make a difference, right? That's our mission. If we're not helping them, we're defeating the purpose there. And marketing is one way that you can help them make a difference. That's right. I yeah. love that. I love that. So for our listeners, for our viewers, if they want to find out a little bit more about Marketing 360, uh, what's the best way, way to do that? And uh, are there any kind of, how do, how do you recommend it get started if they want to? I just go to marketing360.com and check it out, see if it's interesting to you. If it is, mm -hmm. click plans and price and you can create a free account and try a lot of the tools for free. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd, I would also say if you're looking just for any valuable and free information, just go to YouTube and search Marketing360 and subscribe because we do you know, marketing tip videos all the time I think are valuable, nice. no matter what size your business is. Yes, yes. And I love, I love the videos. It's always very, and it's not like one of those little teaser little marketing videos. Like these are very in-depth videos that you, you get a lot of value. Like JB said, doesn't matter what stage you, you start up, you're doing a couple million, you're doing whatever it might be. Uh, I think you'll, you'll find a lot. There's no hype. This is what I like about JB's videos. No hype. It's just, hey, no, facts. Here's, yeah. here's what works, here's what doesn't work. Follow these kind of steps. So I, I love it myself. Yeah, awesome. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, JB. Thank you for being on the show. Uh, it's awesome and seeing what you're doing. I can't wait to see IPO. It'll be, it'll be a, a, a crazy, crazy moment. It would be amazing as an entrepreneur. Yeah, yeah. Lord willing. We'll keep chopping wood over here every day. So, but yeah, thanks, Dan. I really appreciate it. Love everything you're doing. Love your content. So I appreciate you um, you're taking the time to, to chat. Thank you. Take care. Yeah, thanks. Hi, this is Dan Locke. We're looking to invest $10 million in 100 tech startups in the next three years. You could be one of them. If you are a founder of a tech startup, if you are looking for financial capital, guidance, and mentorship, go to www.danlockventures.com to see if you qualify.